We can also use the particle model to explain gas pressure. And gas pressure can be explained by discussing the forces of the molecules colliding with the container that the gas is in. We can use the particle model to explain gas pressure. And gas pressure can be explained by discussing the forces of the molecules as they collide with the container that the gas is in. So if you can imagine these particles moving around inside this container, they're going to do collisions with the container. And the more frequently they do those collisions, the higher the gas pressure. And also the more force, so if they're moving faster, then they're going to do more force of collisions with the container, the higher the gas pressure. Now be careful when you're discussing these to discuss either the frequency of the collisions with the container or the speed and therefore the force of the collisions with the container, not about the collisions with each other. Students often make this mistake because they discuss gas pressure in chemistry when they talk about rates of reaction. And yes, a higher gas pressure does mean more frequent collisions of the particles with each other, but that doesn't define gas pressure itself. So in physics, whenever you're talking about gas pressure, always talk about the collisions of the particles with the container that the particles are in, with the container that the gas is in. How frequently do the particles collide with the container? Molecules of a gas, they move in random directions and with random speeds. And temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles. So if the temperature of a fixed mass of gas in a fixed volume increases, then the particles will move around at higher speeds. So higher temperature, higher speed of motion because they've got more kinetic energy. This means that collisions between the particles and the walls of the container are going to be more frequent. And so that is going to mean a higher pressure. And also because they've got higher speeds, they're also going to have a higher force. So that will mean a higher pressure. So at a low temperature, less frequent, less force collisions with the walls of the container. At a higher temperature, so more frequent collisions, at a higher speed, so with more force, of the particles with the walls of the container that they're in. And memorizing these particle pictures will help you do that explanation in the exam. Temperature is actually proportional to pressure. It means if you double the temperature, you also double the pressure. And this can be shown on a sketch graph just such as this. You need to remember this rule that higher temperature means higher pressure. And actually we do this experiment in the lab at sort of normal temperatures above freezing. And that's what the black line, the solid black line in this graph represents, the actual experimental data. And what we can do is we can extrapolate back to the origin of the graph. And that's where the line would actually cut the x-axis. And that point would be something called absolute zero. So if you could imagine a material which had zero kinetic energy, that would be at zero degrees Kelvin. That would be at absolute zero. And you do need to have this idea that there is a theoretical minimum temperature, a theoretical zero. There's no theoretical maximum temperature though because we could theoretically increase the kinetic energy of particles infinitely. It's really useful to imagine the particles as you're discussing gas pressure.